Hey beautiful people of the internet, my name is Ryan and like the title of this video promises, today I am going to be reviewing the daunting, masterful Gravity's Rainbow by Thomas Pynchon. And yes, I'm gonna say his name wrong the entire video. But first, if you were wondering what happened to my hair, there is a video for that. Um, and also, if you're one of the people who left such nice comments on that video, I just wanted to say that I and my stepdad Dean have read uh, all of those comments and they mean a lot. So, thank you. Alrighty, cue the music. It's book review time. I actually skipped the music. We've got a lot to cover today and not much time to do it, so let's get right into it. Disclaimer, this video contains no spoilers and also is coming to you in three parts, like a good grilled cheese sandwich. Bread, cheese, bread. Or um, the basics about the book, my personal reaction to it, and whether or not you should buy the book. Okay. Buckle in! Part 1, the basics about the book. Gravity's Rainbow is the third novel of the famous American writer and recluse Thomas Pynchon. It was published in 1973 and this edition, which has a cover which I adore for reasons that should be clear very soon, comes in at around 760 pages. It is also the most important postmodern novel in the eyes of a lot of people who know what they're talking about. Gravity's Rainbow is a hellishly controversial book. Um, so much so that when I said that I was going to be reading it this summer, you all tended to react in two ways. One, OMG, I cannot wait for you to review that. And two, I'm praying for you, Ryan. I am praying for you. And speaking of controversial, this is actually maybe my favorite story about the book. Gravity's Rainbow basically won the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction in 1974. Except that it didn't. How exactly do you basically but not actually win an award? Well, it's not easy. Gravity's Rainbow was selected as the winner of the prize, and then some of the judges got very upset at a certain section of this book which I'm not going to talk about, and instead we'll just represent using a series of emojis. Yep. I hope your imaginations went wild with that one. Long story short, Gravity's Rainbow is set to win, and then all of a sudden, poop into mouth, and no Pulitzer Prize for fiction is given for that year. Okay, so the story. Gravity's Rainbow starts off with this very lovely premise. That during World War II, if you were to look at a map of London and mark down on that map all of the locations where the V2 bombs from Germany had landed, that map would actually strangely be identical to a map of the places in London that the fictional character Tyrone Slothrop had recently had sex. What's going on there? How are one man's erections related to the German bombing of London during World War II? Paranoid much? Hey, ding 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 ding, this is pension, so of course it's paranoid! Gravity's Rainbow is the very paranoid story of Tyrone Slothrop, as well as nearly 400 other characters, as they try to understand how, in ways spiritual, psychological, cultural, and also personal, the rockets have changed Europe during World War II. In particular, they spend a lot of time chasing one very special rocket, the Rocket 00000, which, uh, once you figure out what that rocket is there for, is just so good and striking and, like all of Pension's details, um, related to a very human concern. And there you have it, a terribly short and horribly vague description of the story that is going on in this big book. The novel also features a light bulb as a main character, a fictional history of the extinction of the dodo bird, and so many songs and limericks that this really kind of reads like a trippy musical. Okay, I think right about now, wherever we are in the video right now, now is the time uh, to talk about this before we move on. I am pretty convinced that Gravity's Rainbow is not for everyone, and in fact I can think of some good reasons not to read it. And I can't believe I'm about to do this in a video, but I want to talk to you about those reasons. In my opinion, you should very seriously consider not reading Gravity's Rainbow because A, this is a difficult book, possibly the most difficult book you have ever read. So that yes, while there will be easy sections, there are some sections where you are going to have to work very hard. B, even if you do make sense of those hard sections, this is also meant to be a disorienting book. So there are just some sections you will not understand, regardless of how hard you try. And you have to be okay with that. See, this is a very funny book, but that humor comes from the very, very bottom of the gutter. And the same thing with the sex in the book. You should be prepared to be shocked at the perversity. D, I'll talk a little bit more about this later, but Gravity's Rainbow is full of non-literature stuff. So that it's very possible to be reading and then all of a sudden think to yourself, I am not a hard sciences person, I'm good with stories, why am I reading this? And then decide to put it down. And finally, E, this one's gonna sound a little bit hokey, but I'm still gonna talk about it. Gravity's Rainbow as a book will set you adrift. Between its subject matter, which is paranoia and being lost in a system that is much larger than you, and the way that it tackles this subject matter, which is with this kind of like fabulous disregard for the rules of a universe, it is very possible to feel, it's very easy to feel like you have been dumped off 
the side of a boat out in the middle of the sea and left with nothing to hold on to. If existentially adrift didn't sound so pompous, that's probably the phrase I would use here, but then again I just said it. So here we are, being pompous. Okay, so those are all legitimate reasons to not read the book. And I'm sure there are even many more that I didn't list here. But if I haven't scared you away with all of the talk about how elusive this book is, now we get to have the conversation about the ways in which this book did strike me. Because it did. Part two is my personal reaction to the book. We should probably start by covering all of the more basic ways to evaluate a book, right? I already mentioned this in my review of The Crying of Lot 49, but Pynchon is precise on the sentence and detail level in a way that just makes you happy to see how this man's brain works. On the larger theme level, Pynchon is basically masterminding the combination of a lot of large topics into one cohesive novel. What I mean by that is that a lot of great novels take a large topic and they set it alongside the actual plot of a story, and then you get to kind of like bounce reflections back between the two in order to add depth to both. He does that with Hollywood culture of the 40s, uh, with like chemistry and physics and also like Pavlovian psychology, the list just keeps going on. That along with the incredible mixing of genre and style from page to page is kind of Pynchon's trademark as far as I'm concerned. So this is the part of the review where I was planning on talking about the structure of the book which a lot of readers consider to be a perfect circle. However, before I do that it is time to give credit where credit is due. Go immediately and watch the book chemist's video. Uh, a Reader's Guide to Gravity's Rainbow. It is the best description of this key fact of Gravity's Rainbow, the structure, as well as just being generally helpful. Honestly, almost anything that I do right on this channel is probably a result of having watched The Book Chemist way too much, uh, but anything that I do wrong is also my own damn fault. But this is especially true of Gravity's Rainbow, so I will put a link to that video in the description below. Okay, but so what is this circular structure that you mentioned, Ryan? I'm going to avoid spoilers here and just talk very generally, but like I said, The Book Chemist video goes into more detail and is probably all altogether better. So the event that starts the novel is also the event which is just about to happen as the novel finishes. Leads to that kind of circular shape, a little bit like Finnegan's Wake, a little bit not. And that is a pretty cool thing, however none of the complications have even started yet because during the novel Pynchon actually co-ops you into participating in that event so that what seemed at the beginning of the novel just to be a thing that is happening by the end of the novel is a thing that is happening to you. Add on top of all of that Pynchon's very smart thinking about this kind of event which occurs for you, the reader, during different parts of the novel, so that you arrive at the end with a much more complicated picture of what is just about to happen. And there you have what is, in my opinion, the most beautiful structure for a novel that I've ever seen. And finally, part three, the age-old question, why did the chicken cross the... I mean, should you get rid of some of your funds in order to hold a copy of the book in your hands. I'm just going to end with the kind of thesis version of this review, and then I'm going to let you decide for yourselves. Gravity's Rainbow relies very heavily on the experience part of the reading experience, because your job is less about figuring out exactly what is happening, and more about holding your eyelids open and just absorbing as much as you can as the novel takes place. Even beyond that, actually, Gravity's Rainbow is about pushing your limits as a reader. You will be pushed against all kinds of genres and styles. You'll be pushed to the limit of how much information you can possibly hold in your head at one time. And you will definitely be pushed against all kinds of supposedly unbreakable rules that then, of course, get broken. Gravity's Rainbow is one of those novels that you could conceivably crawl into and never leave. You could spend the rest of your days just chasing connections. And if any or all of that sounds like it's up your alley, then definitely buy the book. If not, then no judgment from me. You might even possibly be the wiser of the two of us. Because as for me, I will definitely be reading more Pension and maybe someday reading more of Gravity's Rainbow. Alrighty, that is really all that I've got for this week's video. If you liked what you saw, there's also a playlist of book reviews down in the description, so you can check that out. I make videos every Monday, so if after all of that rocket talk you're really looking forward to pressing a red button, I think there's also one down there. Otherwise, thanks for sticking with me in this video today, and I will see you all next Monday. Best wishes! Okay, random bookish factoid for you. I mentioned that in Gravity's Rainbow there are a whole bunch of songs and limericks, um, like this one. They happen during the middle of the text. It turns out that a band named Thomas Pension Fake Book re like took all of those songs which are on paper in the book 
and turned them into sounds. I'm going to leave their SoundCloud also in the description below so you can check that out.